Welcome to the date table series or the calendar table series. This will be a series comprised of six videos. The first three will be how to create a basic calendar table. Video number one, how to create it in Excel. Video number two, how to create it in DAX, either in Power Pivot or Power BI. And number three, how to create it in Power Query. And then the next three videos will be the extended calendar table. So columns beyond those regular ones, how to extend your calendar table. And that will be how to get much more out of your calendar table, either in Power Pivot or Power BI. And without further ado, let's jump into it and let's look at our data. So this is what we're gonna start with. We're gonna start with free tables. Uh, there's a sales table, so that's our fact table over here, but it's the granulation is yearly. And then we have the forecast table, again, by year, and then we have a salesperson table, right? These are our free tables, and this tables will comprise our data model. And we want to add an extra table, and that is our calendar table. Now, what would our calendar table or what should our calendar table look like? If you want to create a calendar table in Excel, we should first know what is a calendar table? What do we need? Well, what do we need to have a calendar table? Basically, you need one column. It almost never is just one column, but basically you need one column and that is date. So you need a column of dates. Which dates I hear you say? Well, good question. So. What you would do is this, you would find the earliest date in your data. But this is where things get tricky, right? You can see that I have three sets of dates here. I have dates in my fact table, I have dates in my forecast table, and then I have dates in my salesperson table. Now, what you need to ask yourself is, what do you want to slice and dice by, right? Do I need to slice and dice this table? No, right? And then the, these dates don't matter. So what we're looking at are these dates. And then when you know that these are the dates that you're looking at, what you find is your earliest and your latest date, right? So your earliest date here would be this, and let me just try to somehow visualize that. So let's do this and this. Let's save this as a cell style, just so we can easily transfer it to this, because this is our latest, right? This is our earliest date, this is our latest date. So if I now put them somewhere here, so I go January 1st, 2017. Now, mind you, this could have been July 3rd. This could have been March 2nd. You always need your calendar to go back to January 1st. You don't really need to, but you need to, right? If you want things to work or to be optimal, this is what you need to do. And then you'll notice that the last date is actually January 1st also, but you need to take that to December 31st of that year, right? These are our limits on the date, these two, right? Now, how do I create a date column that's gonna start with this date and go all the way down to this date? Now, you have plenty of options for that, one of them, the simplest one, would be to simply copy this one over here and then go, well, you go fill and you go serious, or you can also just right click on the handle, shake it about and say serious. So that's what I wanna do. I'm gonna to go to column, it should be a date, every day counts, and it should go to December 31st, 2022. 
right? That's all you need to do. But this is kind of a, well, it's not the best of methods simply because it's hard coded. If I now want to go to 2023, I will need to repeat the process or somehow add an extra year down there, but there's no way to do it automatically. If I just change this, that will not change. So another way to do this is to start like this, to say, I want to create a sequence of dates. Now, how many rows should it be? Well, it should be this minus this, right? How can I minus that? Well, they're numbers, so I can just say minus those. Now, the columns don't matter because it's going to create one by default. Where should it start? That's a good question. It should start right here. And what should the step be? It should be one. Right? Let me just push that one there. And there it is. So that is our calendar table done. But the great thing about this one is if I now change this to 23, right? This one is already done, except for the formatting, which we'll fix right now. So we'll say this should be simple dates. And if I go check the latest one, there it is, right? So you can see that I also missed one. So let me go back to 2022, the way we had it before. And you can see that it only goes to the December 30th. So let's just say, well, what you should do is that minus that plus one, right? That's the amount of dates you need to add, and there it is. So here is our the basis of our calendar table. And now if I just extend this, and I'll do the most simple one, I would extend it like this. So the first one I'm going to do is year, and that one will just be equals year of, well, this cell, but actually just go throughout the whole range, right? Like this. And then I'll do month, number, and then I'll do month short, and then I'll do month. Now, there's no rule as to how to do this you don't actually need the short name and the long name. If you only use one, just do that one. And whichever one you do, that one should be called month, right? You just need to make sure of that. So that one should be called month. That is your, you know, basic uh, column that you're going to slice and dice by. And this one, so the month number should just be month of, again, this and everything that it defines like this. What is my month short? Well, that one is a bit trickier. It should be the text function of this. Again, everything it defines. And how should it format that? Well, just give it three M's like this. And then this one, because it's a long name, will kind of be the same as the previous one. So again, it's the text function of this and everything it defines, but we should format it as four amps like this, right? And there you go, right? And this is basically the most basic version of the calendar table you can have. It's a cool version because it's dynamic. So if I change this, my calendar just goes to the end of 23. Let's just check if that works. Go down and there it is. Everything works except for the format of the last cell, but we can fix that immediately like this. And it has all the columns we need, maybe even one too many. If I was using this in every table and every chart that I create, then this column I don't need, then I would call this one month, but you do need the month number. Even though you think you don't, you need it because in your data model, you're gonna have trouble sorting these months, right? And that's why you need the month number because that one's gonna sort your month names correctly. 
Okay, so this basically is the most basic calendar that you can create in Excel, right? What we could have added here was a quarter, week number, weekday, uh, stuff like that, but let's just stick to the basic, basic calendar, right? And what we're gonna do in the next two videos is I'm gonna show you how to create this, either in Power Pivot or Power BI with DAX, and that's where this is gonna be a huge problem. And then I'm also gonna show you how to create this in Power Query, and that will be the pinnacle of the basic calendar. And once we have that one down, we're gonna to go to the upgrade, and that is just an upgrade of this basic calendar. So you always need this as your staple, right? Okay, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.